How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Uncut, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Is Roquan Smith Ryan Pace's best first-round pick, and how will he fare in 2020? We're going to be answering these questions and many more today in episode 39 of Uncut. Welcome back to the show, guys. I would like to say, if you're stumbling upon this video and want Bears content every day, we're 10 subscribers away from 1,500. A uh, pretty big mark, so do us a favor, subscribe, click the bell for notifications whenever we post. Also, drop a like on this video for us. A very important episode today, talking about Roquan, uh, someone who's been incredibly productive during his two seasons with the Bears. Also has had some uh, personal life issues uh, throughout his time uh, here in Chicago, but uh, it should be a very interesting conversation today. I'm your host, Chris Malpe, and today I'm joined with my co-host, Jalen McClinton. Jalen, how's it going, man? It's good. Uh, I just woke up, but I'm ready to talk about some beer football. Absolutely. And uh, talking about a young star uh, possibly really going to jump on the scene here in 2020 with Roquan Smith. Just going through his stats a little bit before we get into the into the thick of things, I guess you could say. So obviously, you know, a first-round pick there in 2018. I believe uh, eighth overall there uh, to the Bears, a, a very good pick. I remember Jalen wanted the Bears to select Tremaine Edmonds, another good linebacker who turned out well in that draft. Um, yeah, no comment on that. You, you happy we got Roquan? <laughs> I mean, Tremaine, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I didn't get the Tremaine Edmonds pick wrong. I knew he was going to be a great player, which he is for the Bills defense, but um, I'm definitely happy with Roquan. Thank God we, we picked a, a good player. Absolutely. So looking at Roquan's time in Chicago has been absolutely a beast. Uh, his rookie season, uh, 121 tackles and five sacks, as well as an interception. Two interceptions, actually, one in the playoffs, one in the regular season. Five passes defended. Uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, also uh, five QB hits and eight tackles for a loss. Heading into 2019, runs into a, a couple personal issues, I think, only missed a week for that, and it was never really unveiled what happened. You know, some people said he crashed his car. Some people said it was a family thing. But that being said, um, he's still looking to pop out on this scene in 2020 and was on track if he didn't get injured there to actually basically wipe his stats out of the water. He had a 4-5-1 40-yard dash at the uh, 2018 NFL Draft as well as a 33-and-a-half-inch vertical jump. I would like to remind you guys before going through stats here in 2019, he was placed on injured reserve after suffering a torn pectoral in Week 14. So missed most of that Week 14 game and obviously 15, 16, 17, and he was on track just to kill his stats from 2018 and 2019, as crazy as it is to say it. One of the next great Bears linebackers, I would say so. Played in 12 games, one interception, two passes defended, also had 101 tackles and five tackles for a loss. You would assume if he played out the rest of the season – he would have had more tackles and more tackles for loss there uh, if he ended up playing it out. You know, such a great, versatile player. Not only great in coverage, but also can be that sideline to sideline linebacker that can get out there to defend a running back. Uh, and also, I, I mentioned earlier, pretty good in pass coverage. A player that everyone's really looking to pop out on the scene, and I'm really excited to see what he can do here in 2020. Jalen, first question for you. Obviously, Ryan Pace has selected a couple players here in the first round since becoming the GM of the Bears in 2015. Some of those players mm -hmm. include Leonard Floyd, Mitchell Trubisky, and Roquan. But do you think that Roquan is, is hands down Pace's best first-round draft pick? Right now, yes. Hopefully that turns out to be Mitchell down the road. But, uh, yes, for his production in his first two years, Roquan is definitely uh, the best first-round pick, which is kind of sad because Ryan Pace has been here since, like, 2015, and that was his last first-round pick, uh, which was two years ago. So, yeah, for right now, Roquan is definitely uh, his, his best first-round pick. Roquan is a very good player. Um, you know, last season, if he didn't if he didn't get hurt, he would have definitely had better stats than he had in, in his strong rookie season. Um, hopefully, he, he stays healthy this year, uh, finally becomes that pro bowler and all-pro linebacker that I know most Bears fans can already tell that he's going to be. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, looking at Pace's first-round draft picks, it hasn't been incredible. Um, you know, I mean, you look at Trubisky and Floyd, uh, it, it's not that great. Um but hopefully that can pan out a little bit more. Obviously, something that's been important for Roquan, you know, obviously coming into his rookie season, was breaking that uh, tackle record set by Brian Urlacher in his rookie season. I believe it was around 
120, 130. Um, and obviously, I just said, you know, hands down, I think Roquan is the best first-round pick that Pace has ever had. And if you look at, you know, some individual career records for Bears players, uh, Gary Fensick, the legendary safety from the 85 team, with the most takeaways, uh, with 50. Charles Tillman with nine defensive touchdowns and 44 forced fumbles. Mike Singletary with 1,488 tackles. Um, Richard Dent with 124.5 sacks. There's a ton of records when it comes to this Bears team and what they're able to do on defense. And I really do think that Roquan can produce like some of these guys down the road. You know, he obviously is only 23 years old. We discussed him, uh, you know, being someone who can break out on the scene. He, he, he's still very young. If you look at his total tackles throughout two seasons, he's got 222. So you would assume if he can play 14-ish years in Chicago and if he only keeps getting better, he may even be able to break that tackle record sent by Mike Singletary. Regardless, I think Roquan is going to end up being one of the better Bears linebackers of all time. That's definitely a bold take, but I definitely think he can achieve it. So Jalen, 12 games played last year, just over 100 tackles. Give me a rough mm -hmm. estimate on... I mean, it's hard to predict interceptions and stuff, but give me a rough estimate on sacks tackles and tackles for a loss for Roquan here in 2020 in 2020 so this upcoming season yes sir uh so he had 101 tackles in 12 games last year and I was with him missing a game due to like personal reasons where he missed a game against London which was uh, very weird so um I'm gonna go with 140 tackles um combined I don't want to try to predict the system that's, yeah that's no really hard. yeah the system for tackles um, is weird I'm gonna I'm gonna say four tackles. Uh, he had five in his rookie season, so I definitely feel like he can get over that number again. But since he's a, uh, a middle linebacker and he didn't really blitz like uh, we don't really blitz like we did with Vic, I'm gonna say four. I'm gonna say he has another interception. He got an interception in each of his first two years, and uh, I'm gonna go three forced fumbles for Quan. Okay, uh, so he hasn't. I don't think he's forced a fumble in his career with the Bears. Uh, except for there in the playoffs, that was kind of like a forced fumble slash interception when he tore that ball away yeah. from Corey Clement. This is an interesting one. I'm going to also go about 140 tackles. For TFL, I'll go eight. I'll give him back to his rookie number. Sacks, you know, you look at Chuck Pagano, he really does like to bring the heat more. I'm going to give Roquan four sacks, uh, and I'm going to go two interceptions. I think he, he nags another one out of the air there. Roquan, I mean, I, I think the budding talent there uh, on the Bears' defense, you really can't deny everything he's been able to do um, mm -hmm. throughout his time in Chicago. Uh, a very productive player throughout two seasons. At the end of the day, you really can't deny production. This is an interesting one, uh, and I didn't plan on asking this question until I looked up the Bears' individual defensive career records. But Jalen, I mean, obviously Roquan's a player that the Bears are going to want to resign here probably within the next two years, I would say. Mike yeah. Singletary holds the franchise record with 1,488 tackles. At this pace, Roquan, I mean, obviously we assume he'll get better, but at this pace, you would have to play anywhere between 12 and 15 seasons in Chicago to break that record. Do you think that's something that's realistic for him if the Bears can keep him around? Uh, for a person who's only 23 years old, and if he played like 12 more seasons, he would only be 35 something. So I definitely feel like he's going to be, you know, another, another great linebacker. That's why Pace picked him. Um, he was one of the best of linebackers in that draft. Um, I think he was the first linebacker taken in that draft. Taken. Taken, excuse me. He was the first linebacker taken in that draft. Um, so I, I definitely feel like he, he could be here a very long time. You know, he's going to be our Earl Acker. Um, I'm not going to try to compare him to a Hall of Fame linebacker, but I feel like for the Bears, he's going to he's gonna be that, that great linebacker that we need again. Um, so I definitely feel like he can, he can break that, that tackle record. Um, it's going to take him a long time to do it. He's not going to do it in, in the next couple seasons. But if he stays here and plays consistent, stays healthy, um, definitely. This may sound like a bold take, but I think if he does stay in Chicago, he can break that record. I mean, you had a good uh, note there when you said that he can be this team's Brian Urlacher. I feel like every generation of Bears have, have just had that great linebacker or two. And yeah. looking at this generation, you know, obviously Danny Trevathan's here. You can't overlook him. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Roquan and obviously Khalil Mack there at left outside linebacker, even though he lines up at defensive end a decent bit. You look at that 2018 NFL draft, uh, two defensive players – taken before him in Denzel Ward and Bradley Chubb. He was also the first linebacker taken. You were right about that one. And no linebacker was taken again until Tremaine Edwins 
at 16 there. So a pretty decent value pick. I mean, obviously, if Edmonds was in Chicago, I'm sure we'd be having a pretty similar conversation about him. But as far as Mike Singletary's record goes, I think as long as he can stay here, stay healthy, I think it's realistic. He's shown that he can produce. I mean, obviously, he's only played two seasons. But if his health can stay up to par and, you know, I, if he can continue to produce at that high of a level and get at least like 120 tackles a year, I really do think he can do it. So that's pretty much it for our all-inclusive episode on Roquan Smith, all expecting a very big year out of him in 2020, uh, and also talked a little bit about his future down the road with the team. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, BearDown.com, for columns, articles, and blogs. If you're on Instagram, you can find our fan pages down in the description. The links to those are down there. And if you are also on social media, you can find the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at BearDown. We like to post sneak peeks and stuff on there, kind of get your guys' advice for what you guys want to see. So uh, be sure to follow us on those platforms as well. Once again, very close to 1.5K. We're going to keep grinding for you guys. You're seeing this on Sunday afternoon tonight. Our 53-man roster predictions will be coming out, so look out for that. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, definitely an interesting video to record. Jalen McClinton, it's been a pleasure, buddy. Any last words? Any plans today? Uh, no, I'm actually getting kicked out the house. Um, oh, man. The, the, women in my, the women in my life are having something uh, at my dad's house, which is where I'm currently at. So I'm getting kicked out. But um, no, I'm just pretty much going to enjoy this three-day weekend. I don't have school tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to enjoy this, this little three-day weekend, maybe go up to Sedona or something like that. Might need to record a couple more videos uh, with a three-day weekend. I mean, in this quarantine, you kind of lose track of days, so I completely forgot it was Memorial Day weekend. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for us, guys. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe. Do us a favor, Bears fans. Continue to stay safe. Flatten the curve. June 1 is coming soon. Uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully finally getting a haircut. Uh, we've mentioned it a lot here, but uh, definitely something that's needed. And as always, Bears fans, do us a favor and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh.